Hello everybody. Today we are going to discuss about the first unit that is living world, biological classification and plant kingdom. Basically let us decide what is life. Life it consists of growth, metabolism and reproduction. For life to be stable it has to be maintained in a homeostasis pattern. Before going into the deeper aspects let us discuss what is diversity in living world. What is diversity? Biological diversity, it has been uh, categorized by several scientists, but the first scientist who classified binomial nomenclature was Carolus Linnaeus. He classified it into the genus level and the species level. First, for example, Rana tegrina. Rana tegrina is nothing but it is a common scientific name for a frog. A frog which we can see in the day to day life, it is namely given as Rana tegrina. In this, the Rana it means the genus and the tegrina it means the species. Carolus Linnaeus is also considered as a father of taxonomy. Next what is a species? Species means a closely resembling organism which can interbreed and descend from a common ancestor that consists of a species and this species it is a basic concept or the unit of the classification pattern. A species group of species they form a genera, group of genera they form a family, group of family they form an order group of order they form a class and group of class they form a phylum and group of phylum they form a kingdom. So a basic uh, pattern arises from the species to a kingdom level. For example for, uh, for us the humans are termed into homo sapiens. In this the homo means genera and the species means the spe uh, species is sapiens. And moreover when we see about the genus and the species level, the genus level it is always classified and written in capitalized word in the first letter and whereas the species it is always written in the small letter. So when we are uh, naming the species or the nomenclature of the binomial system it goes like the genera it is also always a capital letter and the species it is always a small letter and moreover this has to be italicized. This is the pattern of naming an organism. So Carlos Linnaeus he coined the term binomial nomenclature and he wrote a book called System, system of plantarum and this plantarum book he classified the binomial system and he more, more or less he classified all the organisms into this group. Have you wondered what is the principle of life? The principle of life is merely homeostasis. What is homeostasis? Homeostasis it means nothing but it is a balanced life. What is a balanced life? We started from a balanced diet. What is a balanced diet? We usually go along with the food items that is it, it, it gives protein, carbohydrates, fats all in a balanced state that is called a balanced diet. So homeostasis is the principle of life. Here what is the unique feature of a living organism? The future of a living organism it has to grow first and then it has to reproduce. It has, to ability, it has the ability to sense the environment and respond to the environment. When somebody is uh, nearing you or is instilling some instinct you have to respond to the environment that is called life pattern and next what is the who is the founder of taxonomy who is the father of biology who is the father of zoology and all those questions can be attributed to a single person called Aristotle. Aristotle we also know he is a Greek uh, philosophist he is the father of zoology he is the father of biology and he is the father of taxonomy. Moreover, he classified all the organisms based on his basic studies. Next, who is the father of botany? Father of botany is nothing but his name is Theophrastus. He is also a Greek philosophist. And who is the father of taxonomy as we discussed earlier? His name is Carolus Linnaeus. What is ontogeny? When a scientific term is given to you, the easiest way to understand a scientific term is to divide it into two. Now, when we divide this ontogeny into two, onto it means life, geny it means generation. So a life history of an organism is called an ontogeny. And phylogeny, what is phylogeny? Phylogeny it means evolutionary history of an organism. And what is systematics? Systematics it is the combination of taxonomy and phylogeny. So there is a term called ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. What is recapitulation of phylogeny? That is a life history of an organism it is derived from an evolutionary history. So based on the ont ontogeny patterns, the phylogeny patterns varies. So when we look about 
how an organism is being developed from one, one, one another, we can clearly see that there is a phylogenetic lineage between two organisms. When one organism develops from one, it has to go into the pattern. Suppose, let us discuss about the human evolution. Human evolution, we know that we have evolved from monkey. So, what kind of monkey we evolved from? The closely resembled monkey to humans is chimpanzee, but not gorilla. Why? Because the pattern like the speech, speech the response and the behavioral patterns, it all goes hand in hand with the chimpanzee, but not with the gorilla or the macaco or the uh, orangutan or those species. So, in, in this case, we can clearly say that the living world, it goes with the word or the, or the sentence ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Now, let us discuss some facts related to the biological classification. What is the expansion for IZZN? It is nothing but international code for zoological nomenclature. Nomenclature, it is a term given for naming of an organism. What is ICBM? International code for botanical nomenclature. And what is BSI? It is nothing but biological survey of India. Next is ZSI, that is zoological survey of India. And among these, all these survey, it is pertaining to the conservation or preservation of endangered or endemic species, <laughs> which is related to a specific pattern or a specific living place. Here, we can uh, consider about a book called Red Data Book. What is Red Data Book? The, the term itself, it, it implies that what is Red Data? Red Data, it means that it is the data which is collected to preserve or uh, maintain the endemic species or the endangered species of plants or animals. For example, we usually know there is no passenger pigeon nowadays. What is a passenger pigeon? Passenger pigeon was previously used to, to convey messages between two kings or two kingdoms. But nowadays, we do not see any one or one of the passenger pigeon. Why? When we look around, when we look around the air conditioners or the, or the refrigerators, only the pigeon, that is a colored pigeon, it survives. What happened to the passenger pigeons? The passenger pigeons, they were extensively used. Based on the human use, we can coin a term called, it was already coined, the term is called anthropological usage. What is anthropological usage? When we continually use, an, uh, use a thing or a, use a place, it is creating some kind of nuisance or it is going to cause some ill effects. Those ill effects are because of due to anthropological usage. So, those kind of anthropological usage, it gives out the demolition or the extinction of a specific species. For example, the passenger pigeon. And moreover, this red data book, it is nothing but it is a record of animals which are threatened or endangered. And there are several terms like museum, national sanctuary, national parks, all these are built to preserve the animal or plant species in a wide environment. And what do, you, what do you mean by key? What is a key? Key, it is nothing but a scheme for identification of plants and animals. So, this key, it is maintained to regulate the, the preservation of the animal species or the plant species. What is taxonomy? Taxonomy, it is the science of identification, nomenclature and classification of organisms. This taxonomy, it goes hand in hand with systematics. What is systematics? Systematics, it is a field of taxonomy, but it includes the description of the species or the genera. So, when a description pattern is being included in the taxonomy, it is called as systematics. And there are two terms called classical taxonomy and modern taxonomy. What is classical? It is a previous thing which is established or it is preserved from the uh, primitive ages. That is called classical taxonomy. And what is modern taxonomy? It has evolved from the classical taxonomy and here the evolution and development process are being included in modern taxonomy, but not in classical taxonomy. There is a morphology for classical taxonomy. When we see, we can clearly see that the morphology is the basic thing to identify a plant species or a bacterial species or an animal species. Im immediately we observe the things and that is called as morphology. But when we go into the classical taxonomy, it is relying basically on the morphology, but not with modern taxonomy. But in modern taxonomy, what we can understand is that here the evolutionary relationship is being maintained and the, uh, and, uh, the development process it is also being given, given equal importance for the study.